Welcome to the UNA Baseball Review. Here are your hosts, Coach Mike Keene and Jeff Hodges. Hello and welcome to the UNA Baseball Review. I'm Jeff Hodges alongside UNA Head Baseball Coach Mike Keene. Coach Keene, a great week for the UNA Lions. You're now 19-6 and six overall, 4-2 and two in the Gulf South Conference race, but really one of the most remarkable weeks I guess we've uh, known in UNA baseball in quite a while. You played six nationally ranked teams in the last 10 days. You went five and one. It was really a phenomenal uh, performance by your team. Well, I think, you know, the first one, uh, you know, obviously uh, getting the two wins against Harding after losing to them at their place, and uh, everybody saw what a quality ball club they were. But in the way we won them, I, you know, we were we felt that the West Alabama series, we didn't play with a lot of intensity. Uh, here we come out with a midweek game against a very good Harding team, and it was one of our more intense games, and uh, obviously the dramatic way we finished with that. And I think it really kind of helped propel us into the weekend, uh, playing obviously the number one team in the nation, a very good West Florida team. You and I playing West Florida, of course, uh, defending national champion in Division Two, ranked number one. You lost the first game eight to seven, and it was really kind of a crazy game where you had four errors and one inning that really hurt you. And of the seven of the eight runs that they scored were guys that had either walked, got hit by pitch, or an error. So only one guy got on base with a hit, scored, uh, but really lost that one in tough fashion. And then came out and just pounded them. The second game, twelve to one, and a two to nothing shutout on Sunday to win the series. Yeah, I think you know that shows the resiliency of our ball club. And you know, I think we talked afterwards. I think I was a little more obviously disappointed in the in the way we played defense because we have been a you know a really good defensive team. And uh, you know, we talked about it after the game. And I you know basically I just talked to him about you know we just made six errors and lost by one run. So let's you know if we clean this up and uh, you know start doing the things that we're good at doing. Uh, then I think you know we need to be out and come out and get a win. Now, obviously, I was not anticipating a, a 12 to one victory by any means, but uh, you know we had that one inning where we just our offense just exploded, and I think what that did is that put a little doubt in their mind. You know that uh, you know man this team's not bad, and we're going to have to work to win the game. Then uh, the guy pitching for them was very good, and uh, Chad Bonner just outdueled him, and just a tremendous college game. That two to nothing game was just, and which we'll see the highlights at later on. But it was just such a good pitching. Nobody had an error in the game. Uh, making plays and then just uh, who was going to come up with a big hit and, and get a run in and we were able to do that. Chad Bonner was the GSC Pitcher of the Week for his performance in that shutout seven and a third innings, uh, only gave up three hits. But somebody else we want to talk about, Josh Carpenter, he had a few defensive struggles during the week, but he certainly out hit him. Hit 474 for the week, he scored six runs, he drove in eight, had a game when he hit in the Harding uh, game and then just tremendous uh, seven of nine in the Saturday doubleheader with West Florida. You know, the, if you look in the year, you know, uh, Josh is uh, on our team is the in with hitting with runners in scoring position is well over 500. So he's been very good in that uh, department all year long. And uh, he just was able to keep coming up with runners in scoring position. And uh, he got big hit after big hit this week. And uh, and I think that's what you do. You know, he, he obviously wasn't one of his better defensive weekends, but he made up for it at the bat. And uh, for every mistake he made, he was able to get another run in there. And that's really what you have to do. You know, there's going to be games where guys just don't have great games that's what you do afterwards and then you know from that game on from the point of the series he, you know especially Sunday he played real well Sunday. We're going to take a quick break and we'll have more Lion Baseball after this. The UNA Baseball Review is brought to you by TNT Fireworks, Shoals Distributing Budweiser and by TVA Credit Union of the Shoals. TNT Fireworks is proud to support the University of North Alabama and the Lion Baseball team. Like the UNA Baseball program, TNT Fireworks is committed to excellence. Our product, service, and teamwork are the reasons we are America's number one selling fireworks brand. Check us out at TNTFireworks.com. And remember, if it's not TNT, it's not fireworks. TNT Fireworks encourages the entire Shoals area to support head coach Mike Keene and his UNA Lions by attending a game at Mike D. Lane Field. Roar Lions! Daddy, can I get a puppy, please? Okay, Sammy. It's bedtime. Oh, ten more minutes, please. Ten more. Yes. Please. Hey, Daddy. Will you buy us some alcohol for my party tonight? We'll be right here at the house. You can even take the keys. Please? Absolutely not. Each time I turn around. Never let me have anything. Don't be a pushover. I hate you. Be a parent. Prevent. Don't provide alcohol to minors. TVA Credit Union was established by the Farm Credit Administration on June 24, 1936, with seven branches full of financial experts offering personal advice. TVA Credit Union offers low rates for mortgages, auto and personal loans, as well as higher rates on savings and CDs. TVA Credit Union is member owned and operated and now open to the community. TVA Credit Union is everybody's credit union. Give TVA Credit Union a call today, 256-386-3000 or stop by any branch.
and welcome back to the UNA Baseball Review. We're going to look at some highlights of UNA's 2 to nothing win in the series finale against West Florida in a few minutes. But, Coach Keene, first of all, talk a little bit about the preparation going into the series because you already had one conference series under your belt. You played two really tough games against a really good Harding team, and I think maybe that helped prepare you for having the number one team in the nation come to your place. Well, I think, you know, after the Harding game and got those two wins, uh, we felt we needed to have some good practices. And the thing about Harding and uh, West Florida, their styles were similar. So I think that was an advantage for us. Uh, good pitching, good defense. Uh, you know, neither team was going to have – you know, a ton of home runs, but they had some guys that had some pop in their lineup. So we knew it was going to be a, a tough test for us, and we felt that our pitching was going to have to be strong in our defense. And then I felt that every game, obviously, it was kind of like the Sunday game, was going to be a pretty close game to see who could win it late. And then being at home, uh, I thought that was going to be our advantage because uh, given that last to bat, uh, you know, is always huge. And we've won nine of the 11 previous uh, series with West Florida, so we've had success at home. Uh, so, you know, you had the comforts of home and all that, but this was a, a different team. Uh, last year they were, you know, very good and uh, won the series, and that's one of the ones they had won here. Right, and, I, you know, I think that's one of the things that we kind of looked at, and uh, we always go through the scouting report, and Coach Hancock was going over to them that their, you know, the whole pitching staff was brand new, and they only had, like, maybe two or three guys that were even on, in the, on the team or in the lineup last year. So it was a brand new team. And so I knew they were going to be a different style of team. And, and we were more concerned about, you know, doing our game. You know, that, and that was one of the things, going out and playing to win. And, and obviously after the first game, I think that's where we get a little bit the, the nerves and a little bit of rank. Well, as West Florida. Then uh, when we kind of realized that, uh, you, know, you know, it's just another team out there, another good team, and we're a good team. So, you know, let's, let's play a little bit harder than them. Let's play a little bit cleaner than them. And, uh, and you know, let's uh, try to get a couple wins, and we're able to do that. And as we go look at the highlights of the uh, Sunday game here, Chad Bonner uh, going to take the mound uh, for you. And, of course, Chad's done a tremendous job this year. He's already won one uh, Conference Player of the Week honor with 16 strikeouts. But, I um, mean, you knew this was going to be a really tight game, and it certainly was. It was a pitcher's deal all the way. Yeah, and, I, you know, Chad came out right away in the first inning and uh, was very good. I know last week against, uh, you know, West Alabama, he wasn't as sharp coming off that 16 strikeout game. And, and the way he came out of it right away, I, you know, I felt pretty good because you could see that he had his fastball working in and out, had good location was able to go on inside and there's his slider uh, which is his out pitch and uh, he's able to have a, you know, a lot of movement a lot of location and gets another pitch here again that ball you can see runs in on his hands and there's Josh right there and you can see that you know I thought we were able to we we're playing with so much more calmness and uh, you know and with the confidence that in this game and it was like every ground ball any ball hit you know we just feel and throwing it across the diamond uh, like you're supposed to so you know and then you got to come up here again, and you know you're going to see a lot of strikeouts. But you know you'll see a slider in his location. He's tough to hit. And this is one thing here in, the, in this game because on Saturday, so many times Taylor, the leadoff guy, or the other leadoff guys got on to start an inning, and it seemed like every inning Chad struck out the leadoff guy. Right. Struck out Larry three times, uh, the guy, uh, the number one hitter, and uh, so really kept guys off base early. Yeah, and that and that's the thing is you know you got to keep him off base because he's obviously when he gets on base he's going to steal. He's a threat to get into scoring position. You know here again they got a guy lead guy on Chad throws a nice slider away and then uh, you know we got the double play and you know and this is a guy that's on the mound you know he was a 90 plus mile an hour guy he was a transfer from Florida State so obviously had a good arm um, many challenges there and again Andrew gets that fastball after you know Jake got a good uh, double in the first inning so you know we we're hitting his uh, a uh, fastball and you know here we go get something going and he hangs a slider up over the plate and Drew Parker who's you know just been a good solid hitter for us this year and uh, very consistent and uh, he takes that pitch and stays on it and uh, doubles and here we got something going and and in this game this was this is where you needed to be able to do something so um, and then we you know obviously with Darmal at the plate and here's with him with his speed and in that situation that's that's just what you really want to do just try to make him move the baseball somewhere and and obviously, uh, from that point on, that one run it was extremely huge at that time, and uh, did a really good job of just staying on and putting the ball in play. And uh, you know, like I said, you know, get on the board first, and then Chad being on, it was it was huge. As I say, anytime you're able to take the lead in what you know is going to be a tight game, uh, gives you a little momentum. But you know, I, talking about the the fastball pitcher for them, my guy's got to be happy to see a guy throwing some fastballs because we've yeah. seen a heavy diet of breaking balls lately. Yeah, and, and I think that's what uh, you know the guy mixed pretty well, and uh, you know, and like I said, with his velocity, I think uh, you know our guys, uh, especially there, weren't uh, you know, wasn't throwing the ball right by us. I mean, I thought we had some good, I thought we had good at bats all day long. It was again, trying to scratch in the runs when you did have guys in scoring position. So, uh, you know, again, we score one, Chad comes out and he's really good the next inning, shuts him down, you know, gets pretty much a one, two, three. And you can see where he's the location. They're just having a tough time getting the, the barrel on the, on the ball there. And, or, uh, and so it's, uh, 
again, doing a good job getting the ground balls and we're making all the plays. And you're going to see um, some situations coming up where they're going to have some base runners. You're going to make some fine defensive plays, as you said, and make them with confidence. Right. And, and like I said, that's, that's part of a good teams. And like I said, we, as well as we've been playing defensively, it was even the first game, you know, even against West Alabama, I talked about kind of surprised me. And then we come out and do it again. And, um, you know, so we really worked hard getting our confidence back. And, you know, there's a ball that's hit uh, fairly hard. It's right at him. But, uh, but again, you can see how many ground balls Chad's getting. And uh, when he's on, that's what Chad does. He just, his ball's cut and getting the ground balls. And here I thought was just a huge play right here. And you can see that ball. And it was like backed up, decent speed, run at third base, two down. And, you know, Andrew comes up there and just uh, has a lot, you know, throws it right across the diamond. Right back in the inning with a one nothing lead, and, and I, one nothing. That was a that was a big play. Yeah, I thought they were going to be able to tie the game there when he had to wait for that second hop, but boy, he gunned him down. Yeah, and he like I said, he threw it across the diamond, and again, there was no doubt he he you know threw that with confidence, and and we're able to get the out, and here comes Chad right back out again. And, you know, got a runner on second base, throws a little slider, gets it off the end of the bat, and uh, hits a fly ball high one. Then we come and run it down and make the play, and and again, they got guys in scoring position, and we were able to get good pitches and hit the location and spot it up. And again, here's a ball that's hit with a little bit uh, on it, but it's right at him and we're able to get the force. And again, uh, we're back in there. Uh, and Chad's still not giving up any runs. It's one of those things that the day before uh, somebody makes an error, it tends to feed and the other guys may make errors. In this situation, a guy makes a good play and everybody else is feeding from that and everybody's making good plays. Right, and you can see this wasn't, uh, you know, there wasn't a bunch of fly balls. You know, it was uh, our, our infielders were having to make a lot of plays. And he here's a, a ball that uh, when initially hit, I knew he hit it you know, sound and get made good contact. I didn't think it was going to carry that much because I knew the way the wind was kind of blowing and I thought, well, heck, it's, it's not going to get out. Next thing I know, it uh, gets in a double and we get some things going here. You know, we're going to bunt, uh, trying to move them over to third, which is, you know, now we get the wild pitch and so even better. So, you know, we got to come up here. And then again, you got to run our third base less than two outs. We didn't get done. You got to be able to move the baseball there and uh, we're unable to do that. And then, uh, you know, Michael walks here, so we do have a first and third situation, uh, but we do have two down, so it's one of those things. Their catcher throws pretty well. The guy's pretty quick to the plate, uh, you know, kind of debating on whether you're going to steal here. And then uh, and I thought Josh Doyle just had a great bat here, you know, had a couple sliders he laid off and, then, you know, really understood and happened to kind of was kind of looking for something over the plate, and the guy threw him a fastball and hits a solid, you know, hit to right field and earn it. And then that, that second run there, I thought well, that was huge at that time. I was going to say that was a great at bat because he was up there quite a while and he fouled off a couple of pitches and was able to get it through the right side where you needed it. Right. And, and again, that was where he stepped up uh, real well here. And again, here we come back out, they get a runner on, uh, get a couple outs. And, you know, here hits a high chopper and, you know, Chad's not trying to, he knows he gets one out, uh, leave it at second base. And then uh, we went uh, with, the, you know, getting the left-hander on the left. So that's what we we're able to do. And um, we missed that one, but it went, uh, he went left on left and we tried to finish it out. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, was able, and again, Brantley's been, the one thing about Brantley that he's done all year is he throws a lot of strikes. And that's why we felt him, you know, this situation coming in, we needed someone just to, we need someone to attack the zone and throw strikes and uh, make them swing the bat. And, and again, he kept it at two to nothing. So it was kind of a decision whether to go with uh, Ben. And we, you know, felt that uh, with, you know, um, uh, Brantley still being out there, we said let's go ahead and let him finish. He's you know he's loose on there. He does too. He hadn't thrown all yet this this weekend, so we figured he was plenty. But uh, you know yeah, you know people were on this play were kind of going. This there. is a third straight uh, fly ball to center, and yeah. each one was progressively yeah. a little deeper. And I'm like, if, if it gets any deeper, it's out of here, coach. You might want to. Might want to maybe look at a change here, yeah. but he he closes it out. And yeah, and I, does and a I great job. yeah, and I think here was another thing that was kind of you didn't you didn't obviously couldn't hear from the footage, but when that ball was hit, uh, I could hear Darmall from the dugout letting in JP that he had plenty of room. So JP now wasn't worried about the fence; he was just worried about catching the ball and had plenty of room. And then obviously the next one was another fly ball. He didn't even get to the warning track. It seemed better deeper, but it really wasn't. And then uh, he gets another. And that, you know again their their approach that last inning they were trying to hit it out. So to me that kind of went to an advantage for us is. Uh, hit another fly ball and uh, you know, really not putting any pressure on our, our infielder or the defense. And so, you know, we get that pop up in, in, in a really good two to nothing win and, and get the series win. I was going to say, and not only a win over the number one team, but that's your second Gulf South Conference series. You've won both of them, so that's going to be huge as you approach uh, later in the season of the Gulf South Conference tournament. We're going to take another quick break and we'll have more Lion Baseball after this. The UNA Baseball Review is brought to you by McDonald's and by the Courthouse Racquet Club. Looks like there's an opening for shipping coordinator, and I've got to pick someone. Tough decision. Okay, you could be a rising star, or but you just ordered a crispy McChicken and a fresh brewed sweet tea for only a buck each off McDonald's dollar menu. So you're smart, right? Yeah, I got nothing. Smart man. Two sevens. Oh, wow. 
the box strikes the again. The box strikes again. He's always strikes. The simple joy of being smart. Hi, I'm Mike Keen, head baseball coach at the University of North Alabama. Have you ever heard the saying, great baseball players are made in the offseason? As a college baseball coach, I can tell which high school recruits are on a weight program and which ones are not. Help your young athlete reach the top of the sport by training with the personal trainers at the Courthouse Racquet Club. Our five trainers are ready to work at your athlete's pace and your schedule. Try our 3 and Me training program designed for three athletes to work with a trainer and lower the cost to fit any budget. Call Ken Irby at 764-0034 to set up a program designed especially for your young athlete. The Courthouse Racquet Club, proudly serving the Shoals for 30 years. Welcome back to the UNA Baseball Review. Coach Keene, the UNA Lions hitting 287 this season. It's a pretty deceptive number, I guess. It's actually the lowest batting average we've had since uh, the early 1990s, but little differences in the bat this year. But you've continued to score a tremendous amount of runs. You have five of the top ten run scores in the GSC, and it's really kind of a unique lineup. You could say top to bottom, but really it seems like we have two uh, segments with Michael Schmidt, Josh Doyle, uh, Jake Sloan, and Josh Sear at the top, and then uh, Josh Carpenter leading the bottom group with Andrew Allman, and you're really scoring runs at the top and bottom of your order. Yeah, I think that was, uh, you know, once we, you know, kind of figured out our lineup, you know, obviously when you get Schmidt and Doyle on, that just makes, uh, you know, life a lot easier for our three, four, five guys because they, you know, they got to worry about them stealing. They got good speed, so that allows them to get better pitches to, to hit. And depending on if we're facing a left or right, you know, JP will either be in the five or the three hole, depending on if it's a left or right hander. And then when you turn around, you got to come back to six with Josh Carpenter, who's been, you know, just very good with runners in scoring position. You got Andrew Allman, who is, again, has had, you saw this past weekend, has had some big hits. And then uh, the one I think one of the biggest, you know, the two guys that have really is our eight and nine guys are really not eight and nine guys. I mean, Drew Parker is, uh, has just been a very consistent hitter for us. And then you roll around and you got to deal with Darmall Moore again. Uh, obviously, when he puts the ball in the grass, I mean, it's it's tough to throw him out. I know that one infield he hit, he ran about a three eight seven, so he can really go. So what it does, it kind of keeps the pressure on there. And I think also the, this year. We just really have not faced a bad pitcher. I mean, you've, you've seen the competition that we played. Uh, it's just been very good competition. We're seeing a lot of good arms. And so it's, you know, we just haven't had that one pitcher where they're either one dimensional, where they can't throw a breaking ball for a strike, or their velocity just okay uh, for we can light it up. So I think for us to score runs the way we're doing, uh, it says a lot about our approach. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I think has really helped us because we have faced such good pitching. Michael Schmidt, your leadoff guy, leads the Gulf South Conference in on-base percentage. He's over 500. Josh Carpenter in that role is almost the second leadoff guy when you get down to him in the order because he's been so consistent. But a couple guys that had struggled early on, Josh Sear and J.P. Lemunyan. J.P. really came back strong this past week. Josh Sear is one of the team's leaders in RBIs. He's second in the conference in home runs. And those guys have continued to produce for you, even when they were struggling. Right, and I, and I think that's the thing. And they, and they still, you know, they they're still haven't been as consistent uh, as they like to. And, you know, Josh, the – you know, had a you know another home run the other day, and uh, you know he's uh, against AUM, and he's had that. You know, that's the thing about Josh is uh, you look at his uh, RBIs, and he's still right at the one of the top RBI guys. It's not that he's had you know if he has five at bats, he'll have two pretty good at bats. We just haven't been able to get like four out of the five at bats pretty good, and I think that comes down to consistency. But you know he's been so productive uh, when we needed him at times, and, and again it's still a threat in the middle of our lineup. And JP the same thing. You know he's so, he's got a lot of good speed, so even if he you know, hits a ground ball. I mean, he's another guy that, you know, he's, a, he's running the, you know, low fours for us when he gets down the line, and then he's another guy that gets on base. But, uh, you know, they'll, they're just, you know, they bring a lot to our lineup, and, you know, with those other guys being able to pick them up, it, you know, it's, it's taking a lot of pressure off them. And one thing you've been able to do this year is have some big innings. You have a seven running in a non conference game against Auburn Montgomery uh, on Wednesday, and uh, one of the guys that really came in did a great job for you, Andrew Hillis. People might not have had a chance to see him uh, throw much because your weekend guys have done such a great job, but Andrew's done a tremendous job in those middle of the week games. Yeah, and I think Andrew was, uh, it was the last time when we played AUM at their place early in the year, uh, he came in and got his, uh, he didn't start the game, but he came in relief and just pitched really well, and he's kind of earned that uh, midweek start. And, and you see who we're playing midweek. It's not easy games. You know, he was able to, you know, get a, you know, against Hardy, and then he has to come back in against another good AUM team. So uh, he's also thrown against Hardy twice. So, but Andrew's, every time he's gone out, you know, obviously he's getting his legs under him a little bit more, and his, his, uh, he's going a little more deeper uh, for us. But he gives us a real quality midweek start against some good competition. And uh, you need to have that. Plus, down the road, uh, when you get into the postseason, you get into the GSC play, you're, you're going to have to have that fourth guy. Uh, assuming if you can get to, you know, past the first couple rounds. We'll take another quick break and we'll have more Lion Baseball after this. The UNA Baseball Review is brought to you by Riccatoni's and by TVA Credit Union at the Shoals. I'm Riccatoni Valentino. 
And I've got a question for you. Do you like lasagna? Do you like spaghetti? Do you like pizza? Do you like ravioli? Do you like steak marsala? Do you like shrimp spadino? Do you like to have a good time? If you answered yes to any of those questions, you need to go to Riccatoni's in historic downtown Florence. They know how to have fun down there and the food's great. So remember, it's Riccatoni's Italian Grill in downtown Florence and tell them Riccatoni Valentino sent you. TVA Credit Union was established by the Farm Credit Administration on June 24, 1936, with seven branches full of financial experts offering personal advice. TVA Credit Union offers low rates for mortgages, auto and personal loans, as well as higher rates on savings and CDs. TVA Credit Union is member owned and operated and now open to the community. TVA Credit Union is everybody's credit union. Give TVA Credit Union a call today, 256-386-3000, or stop by any branch. Welcome back to the UNA Baseball Review. Coach Keene, this is our segment. In a minute, we're going to look at some of your uh, player profiles. But really, a, a great group of seniors this year and a great group of senior leaders for you. You have some underclassmen like Josh Sear and Chad Bonner that have been around a while, but uh, not seniors, but the guys that have been here in the program you know, have, have seen what it's like to play in the Gulf South Conference, compete in the NCAA tournament, and they're really uh, doing a good job for you this year. Yeah, I think that's uh, anytime you're going to have success, you're going to have to have good leaders on the field and off the field, too. they got to be able to do all little things to help the program. and. And I think that's where this senior group is really. I thought that's where they picked it up, and uh, when the play, we're kind of struggling a little bit. But uh, you know, they're, we don't really have like a vocal leaders with that. But I think you see their actions on the field, and, and a lot of times that's that's more important anyway when they're playing the game hard, doing the little things. And I think our seniors have done a really good job with that. As we get into our player profiles. We're going to look at four more players today, and the first three are among that uh, senior group you were talking about. But uh, first, Drew Parker, your catcher and uh, catching. You know, extremely important working with your pitchers and everything that goes on back there. But uh, Drew's done a great job not only defensively but as uh, hitting as well. And you know, Drew obviously caught for us uh, quite a bit last year and uh, and transferred in from uh, Georgia State, uh, and it really did a good job for us last year. One thing that Drew does that you don't ever see though, he his ability to communicate with the umpires. He, you know, he's real personable with them and kind of keeps uh, trying to keep them where uh, from us. You know, maybe nagging on the calls once in a while, but he keeps everything under control. Uh, you know, is able to handle the pitchers, and, uh, and he's a guy right now that's catching all three games, so the, the wear and tear there, he's handled that extremely well. And, and then, thing, like I said, he's done, he's really worked hard on his offense, and uh, when he stays within and, and has had a lot of good at bat, he's another guy that when hitting with runners in scoring position is, is well up uh, you know, over the 400 mark, so uh, when we needed him to come through, like you saw against West Florida, he's uh, been very important and, uh, and very, you know, very good and very energetic, and I think he's probably one of the guys that's more of a vocal leader as a senior and uh, has just been doing a really good job for this year. He's had key hits in several games, as you mentioned. Here's Andrew Hillis, a uh, guy I pitched a little bit for you last year. Had a great uh, two hitter against Arkansas Tech in the regular season last year and uh, done a great job this year as well. Most uh, recently, the Auburn Montgomery game. Yeah, and, and Andrew, we, you know, he has good stuff. And, and you know, going into the year, uh, actually, he was kind of potentially maybe uh, competing for one of the weekend roles and then just kind of struggled a little bit uh, early in the spring and uh, and then worked his way back into it and you know was in the bullpen getting his uh, time and like I said again it's a lot of times when in college is uh, when you're not in the lineup it's you got to take advantage of your opportunities and when he got his shot against AUM and you know a lot of them didn't see him down at AUM but uh, that's about as good as I've seen him I mean I thought he had good velocity and, and really allowed us to win that game because he completely shut them down after they took a, an early I think it was a three to nothing lead and he came in and just shut him down and uh, you've seen what he did the other day throwing so it's been a very very important pitcher for us this year and AUM a nationally ranked NAIA team with a lot of really good pop in their bats as you uh, had said before and he was able to completely shut him down again uh, the other day Daniel Corpy a senior outfielder for you uh, started in some this season, but uh, also been a, just a key contributor defensively and at the plate. Yeah, Daniel, uh, you know, he's a he's a left-handed hitter, uh, and that was kind of you know going into the season. Uh, he had a really you know pretty good uh, spring swing in the bats, and like I said, one of the positions that uh, you know some years you're you're deeper in other positions, others you're a little bit lighter on there. And, and, and you know for him, unfortunately, that that position is the outfield, and the guys are all playing you know real well. 
Uh, so, you know, trying to get him in there with uh, Jake Sloan being that left-handed bat uh, for the DH is, is really, you know, giving him a tough to get some playing time. But when uh, JP was hurt, you know, that would, uh, Daniel was doing the DH and during that stretch and we won several games while he was in the lineup. And, you know, he's a guy that you know uh, when he gets in there, he's going to get some good swing. He got a you know chance against AUM, and that's the thing when you're up big like that, the umpire sometimes stretches the zone out and really kind of got a call that was out of the zone that he it was it was a ball and he took it. But uh, you know he does have some uh, you know his bat uh, has the potential to be uh, you know a good hitter has some pop in his bat. And going into the season, the outfield was a little unknown, but it's really become a strength for you uh, this season. And of course, here's Chad Bonner. He has now has 18 career wins, so he's in the top five in uh, UNA history. But uh, three and two this season, won two Gulf South Conference Player of the Week honors. Yeah, Chad, uh, you know, it's one of those uh, I always felt going in, it's always nice to have a guy that's been in your program uh, as long as he has. And the other thing that, that uh, about Chad is he's been on the weekend ever since his redshirt freshman year. Now, that doesn't happen very much. So he's a guy that's, uh, uh, you know, did a bunch of, you know, a few midweek games. And then uh, after about, uh, you know, three weeks in the season, he got his opportunity to start that uh, number three game uh, way back as a redshirt freshman. And uh, he's never left it. And, you know, this year, uh, we just, uh, the way the pitching is, you try to you know, do the best you can to get, not necessarily matchups, but uh, try to get you a chance to win the series. And having Chad in game three is, is just, you know, you, you feel comfortable when you, you got game three and you got Chad on the mound. And the game we showed highlights of today, uh, Chad uh, starting in Brantley Clonch, closing out two local Florence High School guys. So uh, being able to do a good job of getting the local talent in yeah. the program. I, didn't, I guess I didn't even realize that, but yeah, some of the, you know, Florence, uh, Players in there, local ones in there, and got a chance to, you know, both of them were pitchers in the in the program. Uh, you know, obviously Florence plays six A, but uh, both those guys have done a really good job for us. Of course, uh, going back to the Gulf South Conference, you've won both series you've had so far: West Alabama and West Florida. Those are really two huge series for you. Uh, six more to go, three of them on the road. So I mean, definitely a tough road ahead. Yeah, I think uh, you know, this weekend. Uh, Obviously, when we we're going to be at West Georgia, and that's going to be a much, much improved West Georgia team. I was looking at their stats. I mean, they got two of their three weekend pitchers are below two in their run averages. They're they're second in hitting. Uh, you look at their lineup; they got a bunch of you know 300 plus hitters in their lineup uh, and playing very good defense. So, and they're very good at home. So, and we have not played a lot of games on the road. So, there's a lot of challenges that are going to be uh, you know thrown in front of us this weekend. Back-to-back -back road conference series at West Georgia and then at Valdosta. When you come back home, uh, no easy one there, third-ranked Delta State. So, I um, mean, definitely, as we said, a lot of, lot of tough teams ahead. And, you know, anytime you're playing at the GSC, it, it, like I said, you got to throw the records out the, out the window because everybody's talented. It's just who, who's been able to make the plays and come up with the big hits, who's having a little more success. Uh, but uh, Valdosta, again, is now – They've really started scoring a bunch of runs, and obviously Delta State is, uh, is one of the top teams in the, in the nation and has some big wins. So, you know, it's far from being over, and we've got to continue to improve and continue to, you know, play well. The pitching staff, uh, obviously, always going to be key. You've been able to have the same three starters in each of the three-game series so far, and your bullpen of freshman pitchers have done a, a great job so far. So hopefully that will continue. Yeah, you know, I think that's uh, been the key there is you can get a chance to, you know, get your quality starts and play defense behind them. And, and again, I, you know, I'll give a lot of credit like to Coach Hancock with our pitching staff is able to kind of put that together, uh, work them and mold and put uh, where we got, you know, the, the right guys at the right time when we get them in the game. The Lions 19 and 6 overall, 4 and 2 in the Gulf South Conference, so off to a great start. A lot of great baseball ahead. The Lions have added a game on the 24th at Tennessee Wesleyan. Hope to see you next week here on the UNA Baseball Review. Thank you again for watching the UNA Baseball Review. Please join us again next Sunday at 11:30.